Hey guys, this is Mobin. So, we are talking about immunology. This is the last lecture. This is the immune pharmacology. So, immune pharmacology, let us very quickly look at the immune function and let me point to you for where the, uh, the drugs act on the immune system. So, we talked about this in our last lecture as well for immunopathology. Bone marrow makes T cells and B cells. T cells go to T helper, sorry, thymus. From there, they get um, uh, educated and selected and they become naive T cells. Naive T cell when it is in stimulated with IL-12, it becomes T helper 1. T helper 1 interacts with the macrophages, this is the T cell receptor, this is the MIC2 and then it releases T helper 1 releases an interferon gamma. When the interferon gamma is released, that activates the macrophage and macrophage does the killing. I am going to put my T down. Similarly, once this complex is working, T helpers 1 also releases interleukin 2. Interleukin 2 acts on the same cell, it is autocrine and helps growth and differentiation of the same cell plus it acts on the cytotoxic T cell CD8 cells and help them grow and differentiate and become active as well. And this is the CD8 cell T cell receptor, it should not be looking like this, it should be one antigen here. This is MSC1, this is an anucleated cell other than RBC all cell have a MSC1 and they can present the uh, endogenous uh, antigens virus for example or cancer uh, tissue uh, cancer proteins. So, this is presented here and this is also a T cell here. Now, interleukin 2 is very important to grow and differentiate the T cells. This is one target of the drugs. Then uh, if you see here if the T helper 0 cell naive cell is stimulated with IL-4, it becomes T helper 2. T helper 2 cell interacts with the B cell and uh, number 1 it presents B cell presents the antigen to the T helper cell. Uh, secondly, there is a co-stimulatory signal CD40 and CD40 ligand, CD40 in the B cell and CD40 ligand in the T cell. Then there is B7 and CD28 interaction, B7 on this B cell and the CD28 on the T cell. Then there is the uh, chemical stimulation and that is interleukin 4 and interleukin 5 which help the B cell do the class switching, interleukin 4 for the IgE and interleukin 5 for IgG and IgA. So that is the mechanism here. Now the drugs that act, they act in following ways. Number one, some of these, let us categorize them, some of these drugs are antibodies other are not. So, that is one way to look at them. The other way to look at them is that, that there are drugs that inhibit the receptor, T cell receptor. So, that would be this receptor, this receptor, this receptor. They block the receptor itself. The ultimate, we are talking about the immunosuppressants. So, these are those drugs that would help suppress the immune system. So, what we are trying to do is we are trying to block it. So, to block it, if you block the T cell receptor, of course, the uh, system would block. And remember, if you block the T cell, then B cell would not get help either and neither would be the CD8 or macrophages. So, the whole immune system would go down. So, there are drugs that act on the receptor and block it. So, what are the kind of drugs? One drug is muromonab. Muromonab, if you break up the word, it is a nice drug name. Muro is from murine mouse. Mon is monoclonal. A ab is antibody. So, this is an antibody monoclonal ab antibody. I hope you remember these are formed by hybridomas and this is a mouse derived antibody. What it does is that all T cell receptors have CD3 with them. So, if you see here T cell receptor CD3 complex, T cell receptor CD3 complex, T cell receptor CD3 complex. So, I did a good job of putting the CD3 complex with all the receptors. So, this is a co-stimulatory signal complex. So, CD3 has an epsilon chain on it. Muromonab binds with that epsilon chain. So, even when this complex is getting stimulated, CD3 will not get stimulated and the signal transduction will not occur. So, that is one way to block it. Another way to block is that you do not do anything to the signal transduction, let it happen, but once the signal reaches inside and various proteins are becoming activated, you block those proteins. So, in that cyclo, cyclosporine is very uh, common, commonly used for the immunosuppressant. What that does is cyclosporine combines with cyclophilin. It is a protein present in the cytoplasm as well. Cyclosporine and cyclophilin complex 
then blocks calcineurine. So, what happens is the T cell receptor becomes activated by the antigen presentation, the CD3 becomes activated with it, there is increased calcium influx, calcium level increases that increases that activates Carl moduline. Carl moduline then causes calcineurine dephosphorylation and activates it. Once that activation occurs, calcineurine activation occurs, then NFAF protein is activated that goes into the nucleus. This is important, it goes into the nucleus, binds to the promoter region for IL2 gene and expresses it. Once the IL2 gene is expressed, IL2 receptor, IL2 messenger RNA is activated, formed, ribosomes would make IL2. This is the IL2 that would go out and be used to auto act on the same cell, autocrine activity and act on the other cell. So, that is this IL2. It would go and work, work on the same cell and on the other cells. If when it works on the same cell, it grows this and that would also cause interferon gamma increase and that would cause macrophage function up leveling. And when it would act on the cytotoxic T cell, that would cause the up leveling of the function for the cells that are um, going to kill cytotoxic T cells that are going to kill the virus infected and cancerous cells. Okay. So, now let us see what, how these drugs are stopping there. Cyclosporine, sporine plus cyclophilin, that complex binds to calcineurin and blocks its activation. So, the whole signal transduction mechanism is blocked. So, what is the end result? The end result is IL2 will not be formed. So, this, this thing will be blocked. The activation will come up to this portion and then immune system would be blocked from here on. Remember now this side is not really getting blocked yet, just this side, the cytotoxic part of the immune system is blocked. Now, let us talk about the tacrolimus. Tacrolimus what it does is it binds to the, uh, it is an FK binding protein, both the limus proteins, limus and limus here, they are FK binding protein. So, tacrolimus would bind to NFAF protein and then it would not let it go to the nucleus and again IL2 will not be formed. So, that is tacrolimus. Let us say we got this receptor signaled or activated, we got the signal transduction done, we got the gene opened up, we got the ribosome activated, we got IL2 produced. Then what we can do is we can have daclizumab. Daclizumab again it is a if you see here, it is an antibody AB, daclizumab, it is once again monoclonal antibody. This antibody is directed to the CD25 complex of IL2 receptors. So, this is an IL2 receptor and this is an IL2 re receptor. So, daclizumab would actually bind to these receptors and block them from becoming bound to IL2. Essentially, the function is going to be the same either you do not produce the IL-2 or you do not respond to IL-2. So, daclizumab is going to stop the response to the IL-2. Now, the final drug, cyrolimus, actually not final, second last. Cyrolimus is a drug that works on the inner side of the daclizumab. So, if the IL-2 becomes active, then what it does is it activates a protein mTOR more specifically mTOR C1 protein is activated. What is the function of mTOR C1? The function of mTOR C1 protein is that it would allow the proteins to be manufactured in the cell, it would allow the growth of the cell, it would allow the differentiation of the cell. So, cerulimus connects with binds with the mTOR C1 and so even when the IL-2 has become activated, the differentiation and growth of the cell would be blocked by cerulimus. And finally, azathioprine. So, this name you can actually easily find out what it means. The prin is from purine. So, this is actually a uh, purine synthesis blocker. So, it works with the 6 mercaptopurine and it causes the purine synthesis to be blocked that specifically and specially blocks the lymphocyte differentiation and growth. So, this is a poison for the growing lymphocytes. So, lymphocytes are not present. So, this thing has a totally different fu function. It just does not allow the neutrophils to be 
sorry the lymphocytes to be growing. So, these are the drugs Muramonab um, let us go in the in the sequence Muramonab, Cyclosporine uh, sorry Cyclosporine, Tecrolimus, Daclizumab, Cyrolimus and then Azathioprine which would block the whole cell it would not let the cell be. Mostly these are used to create immunosuppression why are why do we need the immunosuppression mostly in the transplant patients or the patients who have uh, hyperactive immune systems that are damaging them these drugs are used in them. Thank you.